Commodity prices across the board have been under pressure ever since the Federal Reserve started its aggressive interest rate hikes, which has been stoking recession fears. Even so, in a new report from TD Securities, my next guest says when it comes to commodities in 2023, it likely won't be as bad as advertised. Bart Malik is the global head of commodity strategy at TD Securities. He joins me now. Good headline. Good headline. Not as bad as advertised. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Uh, you know, we, we thought long and hard about it, and it, it seemed to fit. Yeah, well, tell me why. So why don't you think it's going to be as bad? As, well, what do you think is the advertisement, and then why don't you think it's going to be as bad? <laughs> well, I think any time you talk recession, uh, traditionally we, that implies uh, 40 to 60% decline in key commodities peak to trough. Yeah. Uh, we think this time is going to be... Uh, a little different, you know, famous words, uh, a little different, but but we really believe that it is a uh, environment that is full of supply side challenges. And even though we do expect pretty significant declines in demand growth for oil, uh, for copper and other key industrial commodities, we don't see a route as we would typically expect during a period when China is not performing well economically, when the Federal Reserve and other central banks are very aggressively tightening monetary policy. And I think there is broad talk of a recession next year. We're certainly forecasting it. And yet commodities uh, are doing fairly well. Uh, but I think, you know, most metrics. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk, let's dig into that then, because you just gave a whole litany of reasons why it should be much further down. Um, let's talk about the supply side. And, you know, the one that's in the headlines, of course, is Russia and, 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 and with what's happening with oil there. But maybe just take us through what you're seeing on the supply side. Well, on the supply side, of course, there's the obvious um, uh, problem with less crude supply yeah. uh, because of the sanctions, uh, you know, uh, levied against uh, Moscow because of the war in the Ukraine. Yeah. That certainly took an awful lot of supply out of the market and demand has been fairly well. We've seen the uh, spikes uh, earlier in the year uh, to the upside. We, we've seen corrections recently, uh, but the fundamental problems remain. And, and one of the issues is OPEC Plus, uh, the major global producer cartel, can and has the latitude to behave strategically. Uh, you know, a few weeks ago, they've made an announcement that they will reduce supply by some 2 million barrels. Well, the quota anyway. Um, and prices have been doing fairly well as a real result. On the other hand, we have, prop, uh, you know, places, <clears throat> excuse me, producers uh, in the shale that are simply not responding to the uh, recent price increases as we should. Uh, we're seeing evidence that most of the money is being spent on dividends and debt repayment as opposed to moved into exploration and capital X. Why is that? I mean, because I, I, you know, that, that is something I, we've heard that, you know, that, you know, they're not plowing it back into the ground to get oil out. They're paying it out to investors. Is that just because investors won't have it any other way? Is that part of the reason? Or what is the reason we're seeing that? Uh, I think there is a lot of uh, truth to that. Uh, one, I, I don't think there's an awful lot of appetite in corporate boards uh, to spend money on new projects. Uh, there are regulatory restrictions, and I, and I think um, there has been a lack of value, positive valuation for these companies, or you know, there, there's, I think, a perception out there that they may not be rewarded in terms of equity price for the risk and the expenditures they, uh, they, they may be taking to yeah. develop new oil supply. Uh, or new energy supply, if you like. Uh, it seems that uh, the belief is out there that investors are happy when they get cash. Yeah, and also, I mean, you know, obviously with the ESG mandates coming around and less of a focus on, on the fossil fuel side, I think I was seeing even in... Um uh, Germany, I think, I believe they were starting to tax uh, the, the excess profits coming in from oil companies. And so you're not getting rewarded, <laughs> you know, for, for, for doing more for these companies, too. Well, you know, there, 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 there is that. I mean, uh, and that ultimately means that uh, uh, there will likely be less supply than you would expect, uh, given what we're seeing on, on the supply side. What about the demand side? I mean, you talked about, you know, all the reasons why that, you know, we could see demand uh, come down. Um, China being one of the big ones. I mean, the COVID zero policy. Uh, and but so, so, you know, what do you see maybe for China over the next little while? Like, are, are you going to, how long will it take to get that engine revving up again, do you think? <sighs> Well, you know, that is a, is a, is a tough question. Uh, of course, uh, many of us um, believe that China was going to free up um, uh, the COVID zero regulations 
uh, you know, a month ago or yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that really didn't happen. Uh, we're, we're, we're continuing to see infections at a rapid rate, and this is a country uh, which is not necessarily using vaccines with huge uh, amount of efficacy, and um, uh, the proportion of the population that is vaccinated uh, is not overly large, and then that ultimately means that uh, there's a lot of risk of people uh, ultimately uh, dying. Uh, still a small proportion of the population, but it's a big country, 1.4 billion or so people. That could be potentially uh, dangerous. Yeah. Um, uh, so we, we don't think those restrictions are coming off quickly. We don't, you know, none of us are yeah. experts in in infections. Uh, but you know, reading uh, of what other experts are saying, uh, we would would say that the return to normality there will likely be gradual. Let, let me uh, let's bring up a, a chart of the uh, oil prices. Uh, Seventy-seven ninety-four is what uh, I think we, we closed at today. Um, bit of a down day, I, I know for for oil prices. But where where do you see it going? I mean, given the I guess the underpinning of the supply side, I guess I would say. And, you know, to protect us from the traditional downside we see in a recession. Uh, sure, we, we, we do see demand uh, not being as robust as, as many thought you know, six months ago where yeah. the consensus was talking about 2 million barrels of new demand, plus we think maybe 1.3 or 1.4 million barrels. Uh, but we do think that uh, as the winter really gets us in, into, a, a, you know, into a grip here, um, uh, we will see demand for heating oil and distillates so of all sorts. Uh, increase, uh, particularly since natural gas and LNG are in short supply. That means we're going to be substituting uh, wherever we can with uh, petroleum products. Um, and we think that the market can tighten up quite a bit. Um, we suspect that it's unlikely that Saudi Arabia and other OPEC members uh, will materially increase supply, as was mentioned recently in the press. Uh, I think, you know, certainly with today at $77 and continued worried was, you know, a market worry that we might be in excess uh, supply situation. Uh, probably no new huge supply coming up soon. And uh, we ultimately think that OPEC will be true to its word and they will keep this market balanced. And, and we think prices will go north of 90 $95 uh, as we move into 2023, particularly after the Federal Reserve pivots and China starts opening up. All right. Well, uh, great to have you here, and we'll have you back to keep us uh, uh, honest in terms of what's going. Bart, always a pleasure.